George Orwell, the author of books such as 1984 and Animal Farm. An author so influential, many of his ideas and concepts are on people's minds even though they haven't necessarily read the books. But who actually was the man behind the books? Let's find out. Something that might be surprising for many people is that George Orwell was actually his pen name and his real name was Eric Arthur Blaine. Eric was born in 1903 to white parents in the British colony of India. Supposedly during his childhood he was very quiet and introverted, yet very intelligent. This was also manifested by his love for debates and conversation. His former schoolmate John Wilkes stated that We enjoyed arguing with him. He would also generally win the arguments or think that he had won anyhow. A few years after his birth, he and his family moved back to England, specifically to the town on Henley on Thames. Shortly before the First World War, his family would move once again, this time to the English town of Shiplake. Around this time, Eric would also find his interest in literature and poetry. Two of his poems were even published in the local newspaper. Due to this and his second place in the Harrow History Prize, he earned a scholarship at Wellington College. He would go on to spend a semester there, but he would eventually transfer to Eton College. Sadly, he did not graduate because his family was running short on money and so they decided he should join the Indian Imperial Police, choosing to be stationed in Burma slash Myanmar. Of course, at that point still being a colony of Britain, he would go on to earn a very good wage and comfortable living. However, he would not enjoy his time there, supposedly spending most of his time alone and fairly unhappy. In 1927, he contracted Deng fever and he was allowed for a vacation to return to England for a year. After the year had passed, he decided to resign and not to return to Burma. He would spend around a year of his life in London, mostly writing and being a bit of a recluse and in early 1929, he would move to Paris. In France, he worked as a journalist and novelist, mainly writing for a newspaper owned by Henri Barbus, a famous journalist and an active member of the French Communist Party. And this is the part where some of you might be kinda surprised. How come that the famous writer of Animal Farm and 1984 worked for a radical left-wing newspaper? Well, let's go on a bit of a tangent about Eric Arthur Blaine's ideology. Maybe surprisingly, he was a socialist, even being part of the independent Labour Party in Britain. Not to mention that later, we'll get to that point, he would go on to volunteer in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the Republicans, which were mostly anarchists, at least in Catalonia. And that's the key part, anarchists. George Orwell wasn't a authoritarian socialist. He despised the Soviet Union and everything it represented. He was a libertarian socialist who believed that the difference between authoritarianism and libertarianism is much greater than the difference between the left and the right. Something we would in modern political mean terminology describe as either lib unity or left unity. But it's completely besides the point. A conclusion to this ideological tangent is that Orwell's works are not anti-left-wing, they're anti-authoritarian. But let's continue talking about him as a person. Even though he was like that in his previous life, in Paris he would truly adapt the bohemian lifestyle, being well known as a heavy smoker. But he did not stay in France for long. After only two years he would return back to England, briefly hopping between houses up until 1932 when he would find a job as a high school teacher in the Hawthorns High School. Sadly, the job didn't work out for a long time and he would go back to doing odd jobs. Of course, during this whole period he would still continue writing, be it the Burmese Days, a story based on his previous experiences in Burma, or his first published book, Down and Out in Paris and London, which was once again based on his personal experiences living as a quote-unquote lowlife in Paris and London. Another pivotal moment in Orwell's life came in 1936. On the 23rd of December, he departed for Spain. And those who like history know that in 1936, there are better places to be than Spain. Of course, no offense to Spain, but most people don't like civil wars. But not George Orwell. Arriving in Barcelona, he told an English communist officer, I've come to fight against fascism. And he did, joining up with the Catalonian CNT, which was mostly made up of anarchists and anarcho-syndicalists. He wouldn't see much combat, but he was wounded by a sniper shot to the throat. After this, the war turning sour and the increasing Soviet influence in the Spanish Civil War, he escaped from Spain via train, firstly to France and then back to England. After his return, he would go on to marry Edin O'Shogensi, with whom Eric would adopt a son, Richard Blair. Of course, back in England, Eric once again returned to writing. But before we can talk about those, we need to talk about the Second World War. 
Even though he enlisted, he wasn't accepted into the army. Quoting, they won't have me in the army, at any rate and present, because of my lungs. Despite that, he would go on to work as a war correspondent for the democratic socialist newspaper Tribune. Eric slash Orwell wasn't very pleased after the British started collaborating with the Soviets. Quoting, one could not have a better example of the moral and emotional shallowness of our time. We are now more or less pro-Stalin. This disgusting murder is now temporarily on our side, and so the purges etc are forgotten. I'd reckon that emotions and feelings such as this would go on to inspire two of his most famous novels, 1984 and Animal Farm, both of whom were published after he stopped being a war correspondent, Animal Farm in 1945 and 1984 in 1949. Tragically, Orwell would die in 1950 from tuberculosis, five years after the death of his first wife, Aline, which died while he was still in France working as a war correspondent. He's buried up until this day in Oxfordshire, with the grave only telling his real name and not his pen name. George Orwell slash Eric Arthur Blaine is a fascinating and multi-dimensional person who was definitely interesting, had his ups and had his downs. And maybe most importantly, his work will have an impact on our civilization, possibly forever. If you're still watching the video by now, I do probably deserve your like. And I would love to know what do you think about George Orwell slash Eric Arthur Blaine. Did you read his books? Did you like them? Let me know. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching, check out my other videos and bye.